So we've looked at the addition of oxygen nucleophiles in water and alcohols, and now we'll look at the addition of nitrogen nucleophiles in both primary and secondary amines. And depending on if you've got a primary amine or a secondary amine, uh, this will come out just a little bit different, you get a slightly different product, but the mechanism is going to be very similar. So uh, in this case, with a primary amine here, we're going to get what's called an imine, and the hallmark of an imine is that you've got a carbon-nitrogen double bond here. So in place of your carbon-oxygen double bond, you've got a carbon-nitrogen double bond, uh, one thing to also realize is the fate of this oxygen here is it's going to get protonated a couple of times in this reaction and eventually leave as water. So it'll eventually get protonated to become a good leaving group. And one of the hallmarks of the mechanism we'll see is that if you want something to become a good leaving group, protonate it. Just kind of like we make an OH a good leaving group by protonating it making water. And conversely, if you want something to stick around, uh, if it's a good leaving group and you want it to stay, well, then you don't want it to be a good leaving group anymore, so you deprotonate it. And this would be a common kind of pathway we look at uh, in some of the mechanisms of these acid catalyzed reactions. They're going to involve a lot of proton transfers, a lot of protonations and deprotonations. And again, if you want something to leave, protonate it. If you want something to stay, deprotonate it. Uh, we'll see this time and again. One thing to note here is that this R group right here can be just about anything. So if it's hydrogen or a carbon chain, that's formally when you get an imine. So, but if it were like an OH and we used hydroxylamine uh, instead of a primary amine, we'd get an oxime instead. Uh, and if it was another NH2, so NH2, NH2 is hydrazine, and the resulting product we'd call a hydrazone. Uh, but in this case, I'm just going to call it an imine here generically, even though there's a couple other classes in there. But mechanistically, it doesn't change a single thing. As long as their nitrogen's got two H's and you have one variable group, uh, the mechanism is going to work exactly the same. So let's take a look at this uh, for a second. Big picture, we'll get this imine carbon nitrogen bond. Uh, we'll also see that every step in this mechanism is reversible. And so you can reverse it if you add water with acid catalyst. And water with acid catalyst, that is H3O+. And that's why H3O+, will take your imine and shift the equilibrium and turn it right back into a ketone. Just an application of Le Chatelier's principle. So, but let's take a look at this mechanism here. So amines are decent nucleophiles. And being decent nucleophiles, the first step is nucleophilic attack. So this is acid catalyzed. So, and it turns out there's an optimal pH. You make the pH too low and you protonate your amine and you, you destroy your nucleophile. So that pH is usually four to five. It's not a big deal. You don't have to know that. But the big thing here is that we still have a decent nucleophile. And so nucleophilic attack is still first, even though this is acid catalyzed. So that first step, we've now attacked our ketone there. And the entire amine has now attached. So now having a negative oxygen, that's an alkoxide, that's a strong base. Having a positively charged nitrogen, that's an ammonium ion, that's a weak acid. So th the most reactive part of this is the base, and so that's what reacts next. So second thing we'll do is protonate. So kind of normally like what we see with strong nucleophiles here is that you nucleophilic attack is first, and then you protonate the oxygen second. And again, every step here is reversible. So there's our species here, and as we said here, now the OH is no longer a strong base, uh, but we still have an acid over here with a positive formal charge on the nitrogen, so that'll be the next thing uh, we're going to incorporate here, and in this case we deprotonated H+, so we also just created some A-, minus, whatever big conjugate base that is from our acid, and that's what's going to come and deprotonate one of the H's here. Cool, and now there's nothing particularly reactive about our molecule. We did form a, one of our conjugate acids again, and we'll use that in the next step here, we'll find out. Uh, but in this case, there's nothing particularly reactive. We don't have any strong acids or bases or any formal charges to worry about. So, but keep in mind where we're trying to head. We're trying to form this imine, which means we want the OH to go. We want the nitrogen to stay. So in this case, OH is a bad leaving group, but if we protonate it, it'll be a good leaving group. And so that's the next step, is we're gonna come attack our acid again. And that turns our OH, which is a bad leaving group, into water, which is a good leaving group. Cool, and then also form some A minus yet again. Okay, so in this case, we've got our good leaving group. Next thing you always do when you get a good leaving group is have him leave. Uh, and in this case, 
it's not the only thing we'll do. Oftentimes, instead of showing two resonant structures, we like to just show one. And instead of having a carbocation here, we like dumping these in to show the major resonance contributor. And so whether you, if you show two resonant structures, it's not wrong. In fact, it's probably technically more correct. But most of the time here, we get lazy, and we like just showing one resonance contributor here. So, and that's this guy right here. We also deprotonated H. Oh, I'm sorry, no, we didn't deprotonate HA. I'm lying to you. We had our A minus there. Uh, but in this case, your next step then is just that final deprotonation. Your A minus is going to come in here, deprotonate, and that gets you to your final imine product. So, and keep in mind, I forgot to draw it in. We did form a water molecule right here. That's where that water molecules form. Not in the last step, but the second to last step. And once again, we have one, two, three, four, five, six steps. And the majority of those are just proton transfers, protonations, deprotonations with, you know, a uh, nucleophilic attack and a leaving group leaving in a couple of them. Uh, but most of them proton transfers. And it'll be, again, a common pattern we see both in this chapter as well as a couple others uh, for acid-catalyzed reactions.